Hello everybody, how are you? Hope you are well. well uh, it is the weekend here, finally in the UAE, in Dubai, so I'm absolutely delighted. So happy weekend to those who are tuning in who have, who it's their weekend as well. To those of you, I know a lot of people in the challenge, you are from Ireland and the UK and obviously you have not got your weekend just yet. But it should be about 6.05 in um, Ireland and the UK, so hopefully you're finished work, hopefully you're at home. Hopefully you've had time to do your CV challenge and to do as much as you can. I did get some emails from some members who said that they they were hoping I could extend the challenge because they want to finish it. Um, I'm going to keep it open until the until Saturday. So you have until Saturday to get it finished. So hope that suits everybody. Do let me know where you're watching from. Let me know where you're tuning in. Um, let me know how far you are with the challenge. How are you getting on? How many things have you got done? And um, how many days are you on? Is there anything you're having difficulty with? Do let me know. So I'm going to just double check and make sure I am. Um, it's working. Let me see what razor. But it is, yeah. It has been quite good so far. I've got to, I've seen some really great pieces of homework from people, which has been absolutely fantastic. Okay. So today, like I said, um, we are going to look at. Six ways to make a great first impression with your CV, cover letter and interview technique. And this is similar to the videos you've done before and it's live, okay? So you can ask me any questions, just put them in the comment section below and I'll answer them as we go along. But I, before I begin, do let me know where you're watching from, do say hi, do please add someone to the group if you think it would be helpful for them. But this is the final day of the, of the four day challenge and I honestly think it's a really, really important one because here I'll put this like this and then I can minimize my screen. Here we go. I think it's so important. Um, I'm not sure how I can move that camera. I'll see how I can do. Um, it is so important to make a great first impression. As you know, we have such a short time to make an impression. And because we are obviously living abroad, a lot of us, those in the UK and Ireland, we're not actually in the country where the job is, it's hard for us to meet a head teacher in person. So we have to make a great first impression with our CV and cover letter. Honestly, we only have about five to seven seconds to do this. So it's really, really important that you take the time to really make a great effort when you're doing this. Um, and there's a few simple tips and tricks, sorry, that will help you make great first impression. Um, when you apply. So let's go here. I'm going to just quickly recap the challenge. Yeah, sorry, I don't know why that, that camera is going down there. It used to go to the other side. I don't know why it's moved. But just for those of you, if you haven't already done it, you have until Saturday. In day one, we looked at adapting our CV to appeal to schools abroad. In day two, we looked at how to pick out your unique selling points, and that was really useful. Lots of questions for you to ask yourself so you could determine you know, what you're great at, what your um, expertise, where your expertise lies. And day three, how to choose the best location school and curriculum for you. And again, this is really important. Always have a plan A, B, C. Never rely on one place, particularly in the UAE. It's so popular, but particularly Dubai. So I always would have a backup plan. Um, because you may prefer to get a job in a good school in another location rather than be in Dubai but being a bad school, for example. So again, it's up to you and your priorities and what you, why you're here. Is it to travel, to socialize, to say you've lived in a really cool place, to save money? All depends on what you what you want to do. So there is there is the address if you want to do the, ch the challenge. It's teachabroadtransformation.com forward slash challenge page. And if anyone's watching and has begun the challenge no matter where you are do let me know how you have how you got on with it if you haven't started also let me know why didn't you start was it because it's during the week is it be, would you rather have it a weekend because it's really helpful feedback for me for next time i can say you know i can change the timing do let me know you know maybe what blocked you from getting it done and again feel free even though this is is more about making a great first impression. I'm still happy for you to ask any questions that you have about the CV. Um, yeah, I'm still happy to ask them um, anyway today. That's absolutely no problem. So anything at all there, okay? So on to day four, six ways to make a great first impression uh, with your CV cover letter and interview technique. So we've 
been mainly focusing on the CV and cover letter before. Um, so now it's our chance to talk about interview as well. Okay. So first of all, here are our six things. I do apologize that I'm in front of some of them. I'm going to fiddle about later on and see how I, how I move my, how I move the camera across. Number one, know your strengths. Number two, um, to make a great first impression, option number two is complementing your CV. Your cover letter should definitely complement your CV. And again, I'll go into detail in that, uh, into that in, a, in a few seconds. Three, show that you've done your research. And I'm going to show you how you can show that, what website you should use. And it's also, it's for two reasons, really. Not just to research um, and impress the head teacher with your knowledge of the school, but also for you to research and see, is it a place you want to work? Is it, you know, has it got the best package for you? Do the students suit your uh, expertise and your teaching experience? So it's, it works both ways. So it's really important to do your research. I've heard of people just taking jobs, and I honestly don't have people do it like without doing a lot of research. But I know sometimes when it's our first time, sometimes we don't realise the variety of schools that you do get abroad, particularly in the Gulf. So it's really important to do your homework. Number four, double check everything. Number five, first impressions count. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean um, more specifically later on. And six, um, how to ace that interview. Okay, so we're going the whole way from when your CV and cover letter arrive to the school and to the head teacher's lap and he or she reads it all the way to you get the interview. You've been offered the interview. They've been so impressed with your CV and cover letter and your application. They believe you're a perfect fit. They really want to get to know you more. And you could then have the interview and that again you need to make a great first impression there too okay unlike ireland and the uk most of the interviews tend to be in or over skype so but some of the some of the like top schools will fly candidates over maybe to teach a lesson or whatever you know so just depends on the school oh, excuse me and then we'll have questions and answers as well later on okay so if you've any uh, questions now do let me know let me just double check to see no nothing so far good now <clears throat> number one <clears throat> sorry the first way to make a great first impression is to know your strengths what do you want the head teacher, teacher to know about you what must they absolutely realize you're good at what must they be 100 percent sure of where your talents lie is there anything that, you know, come hell or high water, you want them to know about you? Please make sure you get that across. And that, again, links to sort of day one, where we looked at job ads and saw the essential and desirable skills. Really, really important that you reflect them in your cover letter and CV, but also when you're talking to your referees. Now, obviously, professionally, you know, you don't want to influence them, but it's also a good idea to go talk to a referee and just ask, oh, I'm just wondering... What you're going to say or for example this is what I you know this is my CV this is what I'm highlighting because it works out so well if what you say in your CV and cover letter is also um, reflected in your reference so to, you know especially if you get on well with your referee do you just have an idea so you're so, sort of both saying from the same hymn sheet because if you can if you said you're great at this and then your reference your reference backs it up or your referee backs it up with their reference that would be it would be, you know, such an amazing thing to happen. It would work so well in your favour. And it really will leave a great impression on the head teacher um, about you. So I know when I've got, when I have had my jobs, any job I've been offered, they all said, oh, your refer references were excellent. You're outstanding. And I believe it's because I, what I wrote um, in my CV and cover letter, I was sort of well aware and I probably had, you know, had been complimented by my head teachers on different things. So I knew that they recognised that, you know, skill in me, that trait in me. And I made sure to talk about it in my CV and cover letter. That's one thing I would definitely recommend. Okay, number two. The second thing I would say would be that your CV should definitely complement, sorry, your cover letter should definitely complement your CV. Please do not write them in isolation. Please write them together. The whole idea of having both of these documents is that whatever you mention in your CV, whatever, you know, key skills or areas of expertise or duty or responsibility that you mention in your CV, 
you should then expand on it in your cover letter. So write a full paragraph about the skill or trait you have and when you showed it, particularly the ones that are in the job ad. Okay, so obviously if, if the school and the job specification mention a certain trait or skill, whether it be flexible or excellent teaching practice or differentiation or behavior management, you whatever they prioritize, you prioritize in your CV as well. And feel free, you know, to use the same language as they do because subconsciously that will make a great impression on the HR or the head teacher or whoever wrote the ad if they see the same language and the same um, phrases mentioned. Now I'd love to know, are you guys doing this? Are you do you write your CV and cover letter together? I've heard of some people just using a CV and no cover letter. I think it's really important to have both. But do let me, are you happy with your own cover letter, with your own CV? How do you write yours? Are they in complete isolation? But do um, also consider that you should never have a generic CV or cover letter. You must tailor them for every single job application you go for. You must always tailor them. Change the name of the school, obviously, the name of the head teacher. Use the head teacher's name. Use the school name. Again, you can have a hundred percent. You can have a generic one with everything listed. Take out what you don't need. Keep it concise. You may may move the paragraphs around depending on what you want to highlight first. But be really aware. You know, that's another way of make, having a, a great first impression. Somebody uh, to make sure that not only is it tailored to the school and job, but then the cover letter complements your CV. And another way of sort of highlighting this is the point evidence explain. Like you learn when you're doing English in secondary school, whenever every any point you make, always have evidence to back it up. Always have a fact, have a statistic, have um, some kind of feedback maybe from a head teacher, something positive to back up what you're saying. Because, you know, I said words are cheap, but actions speak louder than words, the better expression. Actions speak louder than words, so show them how you put that into action. People want to see results. Okay. Next one, I would say, you know, another really important um, way to make a great first impression is to show that you know the school um, inside out, that you've made a huge effort to find out about the country, the location, the school, the curriculum, the students, the course that is studied, you know, if it's at Excel or Cambridge or AP or whatever it might be, show that you've done your research, show that you know it inside out. Because like it, with anything, if you show a massive interest and you've made that effort and they know you've put in, you've put in hours, you've dedicated hours to finding out every single thing you know, that really tells them that you want to work there, that you'll be a great candidate, that you're eager to do anything in order to get the job. Also shows that you are determined, you're hardworking, and you're focused, and so you use your initiative. It really does say so many things about you. I know we had a recent post on the group where a head teacher uh, offered some advice about, you know, he has read many, many applications to the jobs in his school and he was shocked by certain omissions or um, sometimes the quality of the CV and cover letter. And he gave some tips and one was show that you've done your research. And he offered a really great piece of advice, which was to like, which was to, sorry, follow the school's Twitter feed or their Facebook page or if they've been any kind of social media account to follow it because then you can you know compliment them on a match they've won or they might post some pictures that might be helpful for you to learn more about the school so definitely show your research and mm -hmm. um, and don't be afraid to mention it don't be afraid to when you're called to interview for example or you're being interviewed in skype don't be afraid to mention things like oh i saw this or well done on this, or I was very impressed by this. Don't be afraid. I mean, everyone likes praise. Everyone likes to be complimented. And um, so it's definitely something that you should consider when you are talking to the head teacher, because that will leave a, a, such an impression. If someone says something positive to you, that leaves such an amazing impression, that, you know. And do remember, they're not just looking for the person with the experience. They're looking for the best fit for the school. So it's not just a matter of, oh, yes, you know, Candidate A and B. Candidate A has got eight years teaching experience. Candidate B only has three or four. Okay, maybe, you know, don't feel that you're going to be defeated by that. Because no matter how many years experience the other 
candidate has, if they, you know, show that they're really not really flexible or that they aren't a team player or that they don't work well with their colleagues, well then, no matter how many years experience they have, really the head teachers will be also looking, also not just only, but also looking for a best fit for the team. Who is going to contribute to the school academically on extracurricular level? Who is going to be um, a trustworthy member of staff? Who is going to do their job properly? Who can be professional without being berated or being chased after? You know, who is going to fit in with the team and just slot in into the school life and, you know, enjoy it? Who is going to be that positive person who moves abroad, moves over to the school and, you know, approach everything with a smile? You know, isn't, isn't going to get caught in that negativity because some expats can be quite negative, particularly if they've been here a very long time and they've gotten used to a certain standard of living, but they sort of probably should have left and gone back home many years ago, but they want, you know, obviously the money is a motivation. You know, no one wants to be that kind of bitter expat. The minute you start getting like that, you need to leave or go home because it's not worth it. But again, you know, they want to make sure you're not going to really get sucked in by that by that group in the corner who are very negative and, you know, so it's also the best fit as well. So highlight your uh, personality as much as your amazing skills and expertise. Next one, we said, I've actually forgotten. Are you trying to do any research? Sorry, we're still on research. I'm talking a lot. Sorry, guys. I am going to try, okay, 16 minutes. I'm going to try and wrap it up in the next, hopefully by maximum 30 minutes. So 25, 30 minutes. So do stay tuned. It's not that much longer. Okay. So I do appreciate you giving up your Thursday evening to tune in. No, but I'd love to hear where you're watching from. I don't know if I've got mainly a Gulf based audience or maybe I have an Irish based audience or British based. Hello there. Hi. Okay. I'm going to add that there. Sorry. I have this thing on my I use Ecamm to broadcast these because I can share the screen, but there's been updates and it won't tell me who people are, which is really annoying. So I might actually have to go on my phone and see. It only says, you know, the, a blank, like a hi, that's it. Oh, hi, Stephen Quinn. How are you? Hopefully it works. Oh, yeah. Okay. Super. Tell me. I've been asked, can I ask, answer a question? I haven't seen any question, but do let me know what the question is. Excellent. I shall ask you, oh, the question. Okay. Hi there. Watching from Glasgow, Scotland. Sorry. It doesn't tell me people's names. It's, it's really annoying. It's really, really, it used to, I mean, they have an update and now I can't see anybody. It's just like a Stephen Quinn. I can see you for some reason. I think, sorry guys, you have to click on allow Ecamm to use my thing, to use my location. And then I can see who you are. Oh, super. Can't share your own. Excellent. Okay. Fantastic. Brilliant. Scotland, you got Tyrone. Brilliant. Okay. So member from Pakistan, can you tell me your name? Because I feel bad not using your name. Um excellent. I'll answer that at the end. Is that okay? I'll take I'll go through this and I'll take questions at the end. What are your chance of employment UE? Um actually I'll answer very quickly. Uh, I would say that there are a lot, uh, it depends on your experience, it depends on your qualifications. Um, I would say that majority of schools, particularly British, Australian, American, tend to hire teachers who have a Western teaching qualification and a Western degree. Hi Abira, how are you? Uh, MBA in seven years of English. Okay, so they tend to hire Western qualified, Western trained teachers. Um, there are schools that are Pakistani curriculum um, or non-Western uh, curriculum or curricula. So they, you might maybe focus on working in those schools. That might be an option. I would always say still apply and blow them away with your CV and cover letter. But I just know in some cases, I, and I don't know if it's a government requirement or something, if it's a British school or American school, but they do tend to. And it might also be due you know, to, to parental pressure where they maybe want somebody who's Western qualified to work in the school. TESOL trainer experience. Okay, if you're in TESOL, I probably recommend looking at something like British Council or language schools. But you said English teaching MBA. Now that's a Master of Business Administration. 
for most countries, you will need a full teaching qualification like PGCE. In Ireland, you got the Masters of Education or the HDIP as it used to be known. You've, you know, in America, you've got the American Teacher Licensing. For the most part, especially at Dhabi, by law, they do require a teaching degree and two years experience. Dubai, not always two years experience. Okay, yes, that's in PGC. Yeah, sounds good. But I would definitely, with the British curriculum, it's very well respected and recognised. Okay, brilliant. Okay, guys, let's head on. I am, yes, so I've actually got a list of things here. So remember I was saying to you about doing your research and I'm actually gonna give you some websites that you can do to show that you've done your research. And this is as much for you as it is for the school. You know, so Google the name. I know it sounds simple, but definitely Google. I was actually looking up something recently, and I I can't remember where it was. I I love uh, fashion illustration. I love drawing, sketching, and actually, those of you in Dubai, there is a brilliant group called Sketchbound Dubai, and uh, run by Alison. She came to the last Empowering Expat Teachers uh, meetup. It was fantastic. We had a lovely, lovely breakfast, and I'm going to do one again, hopefully next month. Now that's payday, most people have been paid, so maybe I'll aim for next month very very broke after christmas holidays and um, but sorry i digress i was looking i'm looking up fashion illustration and if you google it indeed.ae and glassdoor they actually do give pretty decent reviews and they're free they do like company they're not just educations all different companies and corporations but definitely just do a simple search like that to see a review of the school and um, second thing you could do so i'm just gonna go here the second thing you could do is to let me go back here Use TEDS. Now, TEDS is brilliant. Um, I do love TEDS. I've always loved them. I've always used them for jobs. I've I secured both my jobs, both in Qatar and Dubai, uh, via TEDS. And they're at, they were at schools. The school I'm currently at now and the school I used to work at, they um, offer the best packages, one of the best packages in the respective countries. And they only, at the time, anyway, definitely, my old school in Qatar only advertised in TES and my current school only advertised in TES as well. Um, so definitely never discount TES, always use their function, even if you use agencies and job fairs and, you know, everything else, always look at TES as well. It's completely free. It stands for Times Education Supplement and they always have great international jobs. Go on their forums. I'm also biased because I do write, I write for them as well. I write some articles and I, I've shared them um, on the group, um, but I do really find them fantastic and reputable, and that's why I work with them. Um, their forms are completely free. You can go there and ask people who are have been expat teachers for 25 years or new expat teachers and ask them questions there. They got divided into different places. That's really helpful. You can also go to the expat, to the, sorry, Empowering Expat Teachers group. My group, you think, uh, you think I know the name. I wouldn't forget the name. Definitely go there and you can ask People are so helpful and so fantastic on the group. I mean, sometimes I I actually work full time myself. I'm, I don't know if you know that. I'm sure you do with the bags under my eyes, but I do work in uh, full time uh, as a teacher in a secondary school in Dubai. And oftentimes I don't get a chance to check the group. And I'm that's also on two levels. It's also on a conscious level. I don't know about you, but sometimes I find that, particularly with, with the expert teacher community and my business as well with CVs and cover letters and everything else, I do, check the what internet a lot i'm always checking facebook instagram and instagram i just got into recently i used to never use it because I, I but because of the expert teacher i do empowering expert teacher i do tend to use it more but i find i'm aimlessly and mindlessly just clicking on and getting you know 20 minutes past and i'm just scrolling about messing about on facebook so i am trying to also what's the word detox from detox from social media or from that constant pressure of being always online and always accessible. So I'm that's probably a reason too. So for those two reasons, or I'm at work, I don't get a chance to really check the expat teacher group as much, but people are amazing. I'll just come and check. Someone will have posted an hour ago and there'll be like seven or eight comments. So people are fantastic on the group. So definitely do ask there. In Qatar, I worked in, in, in Sherbourne, Qatar. Yeah, amazing school. I really enjoyed it. Uh, four years actually. Well, great years um, but uh, yeah so people are amazing in that group do ask I would say though and I'm conscious of this because I'm very much a person who's aware of and I will talk about later on actually in the in this session 
I know a few years ago, people, when I first started the group, people used to post and, and ask lots of questions. Of course, that's what you do, definitely. But people wouldn't have really done any research themselves. And it might show, they wouldn't really looked up or they might they'd spell the school wrong or I don't know. Um, and then people would, you know, come on and help them and they'd never thank them. And then, you know, a week later they'd ask another question of a different school. But again, never go back and thank the person who answered. You know, just a simple reply on Facebook. Thanks so much. Um, and I actually noticed that and that really irked me. So, you know, definitely ask questions and, you know, everyone helps each other. But do always remember to thank the person. Because that, again, is a good impression. We have got head teachers in our group. We've got heads of department in our group. We've got teachers from all around the world in our group. And once those of you who are already expat teachers, you know, do say thumbs up or yes if you agree with me. The expat teaching world is so tiny. It is so small. So try not to upset too many people, anyone in the in the, in the the expat teaching world because you probably will meet them again or there'll be one degree of separation between you. It is tiny. Like, and I think, you know, I tell to people, I know somebody, we've got someone in common or, you know, so-and-so used to work in that school and now he's head of this school or, you know, she's doing this. So just be aware of that too. So definitely watch how you phrase it. Don't be negative. Just ask and say, you know, PM me, private message me if you have any news or, you know, any, any news, any information. Just, you know, be aware you're making an impression on people in the group. There's like over 6,000 expat teachers, head teachers, um, administrators, heads of department, you know, maybe some HR as well. So just be careful about how you present yourself. Have done British TK. Okay. Super. Hi, Asher. How are you? Of course, Asher. Yeah, definitely. Please, at the in a few minutes, I'll be doing questions. Stick your question now, and I'll answer it for you. Definitely, contacts are really important. Thank you. So underused, but so important. Hmm. I'm not sure what's underused. TKT. Is it a knowledge of teaching or theory of knowledge? But do let me know. Okay, let's go back to the next point and then please guys continue to put your questions in and I'll check my phone and I'll answer them in just a few minutes okay let's go back here sorry like a granny there we are now uh, yes another great resource if you see here is Dave's ESL Cafe now D Dave's ESL Cafe and um, I think it's international job forum it used to be it sorry I actually can't speak it's been a long week it used to be only focused on like English language schools around the world so like so uh, schools where you, you know children would go at weekends or you know turn extra English however it has grown and grown and grown and now there, it also reviews some international schools not just language schools not every single one of course and uh, you know a lot of them might be maybe more negative reviews but again it's a free resource just go and check it see if your school is there and do check the date and, you know, take these things with a pinch of salt at the same time. You must, might you might just have one Discord per person, but however, it's good to know. See a review. Other Facebook groups I recommend you join, Dubai Teachers Network, excuse me, Facebook group. You've got International School Educators, International, sorry, this, and International School Teachers, Irish Teachers in the UAE. People might post vacancies there um, and you can ask about different schools. Um, I know some people do get a finder's fee in their school abroad if they recruit somebody else but I would hope that they'd only recommend it even if they get a finder's fee you wouldn't recommend my wish would be that no one would recommend a school that they wouldn't like to work in themselves that would be my hope because no one's just doing it for the money um, absolutely and another great one especially for UAE but actually it's also can you see it down there sorry my screen, it seems to be a little bit. Sorry, can you see the bottom? Do let me know. It should say which school advisor. I don't think it's aligned. Yeah, which school advisor website and the sister site, Schools Compared. I'll put the link in the comment section. It's got, a, it compares schools like in the UAE and Singapore, I think in Hong Kong, a few different places. It's really for parents to see uh, what the school's like for their children before they choose a school. But it's so helpful for us because it has pros and cons. 
it talks about the report it says about it talks about the demographic of the pupils of the students of the teachers it you know it talks about the facilities so it's actually a really really helpful resource for us too um, and has really good articles as well written uh, by the people who run it and it's really really helpful it kind of gives you an insider view that you would never get if you you would never get if you're not in the country so it's absolutely brilliant definitely recommend that and it's they've also branched from the UE to other countries around the world as well another little tip to give you when you're checking the demographic of the students and of the teachers a little helpful tip for you possibly might be if some of the teachers are majority of the teachers are maybe non-western trained um, or a non-western we'll say for example it could be an indicator that the salary or package might be a bit lower than what you expect um, because some of the you know the teachers might come from countries where the cost of living is lower in their home country and therefore they're paid um, unfairly uh, a lower wage in Dubai so that's just a little tip for you to be aware of how you can gauge the package from looking at things like students or the location of the school or the teachers okay so hopefully that will just a, a helpful tip okay guys what we're we doing we're on 31 minutes i'm so sorry i've already gone over let's aim for 10 more minutes uh, and then you can get back to doing whatever you're doing on a thursday evening okay number four double check everything in your cv so important someone mentioned before about colors and clip art i'm not a huge fan i would i keep black and white check your formatting names make sure there's no typos are your headings all on the same uh, size same font your photo should be professional looking two, two to two and a half pages max check that your email address is professional and um, make sure you have no unexplained gaps in your work history because i've heard of head teachers throwing out cvs if it's not explained they just get rid of it okay and again don't keep it generic make sure you tailor it next one first impressions count i already touched on this earlier on when I asked, told you about you know that uh, expat teacher who posted lots of questions and never thanked anybody and I still remember that um, but do be careful I things like particularly on social media I can't say enough so I said here photos Skype social media WhatsApp Facebook forums emails yes so I noticed some people and um, not necessarily on expertise empowering expert teachers group but other groups they put in put up questions and they're using slang they're not using correct punctuation they've no capitals that is not i know it's a form where it's you know more relaxed and we're not actually working but it doesn't give a great impression if you're if there's a, if there's a head teacher on the site or a, a person you know it might not recommend you because they think you can't spell properly or whatever so please be professional in your in your grammar and spelling also another thing i'd say to be aware of some people might post questions in any group and you imagine as a head teacher or you know on the group if your po profile picture on Facebook or on whatever Instagram isn't very professional looking just be aware of that people consciously or subconsciously might make judgments on you and your ability as a teacher um, rightly or wrongly and you know it might scuff your chances so just be aware of what you're posting and um, particularly if your pictures are something that is maybe um, illegal in the Gulf if you're applying to the Gulf or frowned upon just be aware of that okay so just bear that in mind also your Skype photo make sure that's professional as well now great to ace that interview we definitely so you've managed with your amazing CV and cover letter you have managed to get us an interview you managed to secure an interview at a school that you're dying to work at so it's really important that you make a great first impression when they meet you on the screen. And here I have a few tips uh, that you can ensure that you make the best impression that you can, that you leave a memorable impression, that they really want you to come and work in the school because your personality is a perfect fit. So here are the questions that you definitely should prepare answers to. What are your greatest strengths? What skills can you bring to our school? What do you want to know about our school? Sorry, what do you know about our school, our philosophy, our curriculum? Why do you want to work at our school? Rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Look in the mirror, look at yourself, 
record yourself, have someone do a practice one with you, because you might realise that you do certain things. Even as I speak to you now, I can hear myself saying like a lot, and it's even irritating myself. So that's something definitely I'm going to work on for my next Facebook Lives, but also for interviews, because I keep, I just notice I keep saying like, and it, it's actually driving me mad. I don't know if you've noticed too. But again, in those situations, it's things like that that the interviewer might notice and think, gosh, how many times has she said like, you know. So um, do practice. Practice. Learn off learn off as best you can. Keep reading and reading and reading your CV and cover letter until you know it really, really well so that you can refer to it without looking at it. So everything is complementing what you've done already in your CV and cover letter. You're not expected to have a brand new spiel different that's different from your cover letter and cv no you're going to talk about that maybe in more detail or you know in your own personality way because sometimes it's hard for your personality to come through on a cv and cover letter so now's your chance to you know uh, to shine really be confident clear enthusiastic if you fail to prepare prepare to fail so preparation really really is key and that is one reason why i do mention or why i do recommend that um when people go to job fairs, yes, it's pressurized. So things like search job fairs, I think TIE do one, ISS do one, lots of different job fairs. And 100%, I've been to one. It was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. Amazing schools. It was with Search Associates in London a few years ago before I took this job, which in Dubai, which wasn't actually in the in the fair. It was on TES. Um, and it was brilliant interview practice because I we... I got to speak to so many different heads, American heads, British heads, and I think maybe some Arabic heads or, you know, it was amazing. I got to speak to so many different people, network, but I also got to practice my interview questions because it's a similar questions. You see the same questions coming up again and again. And that, again, has helped me sort of work in the area of expat teachers because I, I had quite a lot of interviews at the time. So you get to practice even though it is a pressurized environment and everyone around you feels that they're losing their head. Um, I know when I went in to the one in London, it's really amazing. It's like a big, over maybe two or three giant ballrooms or guest rooms or wedding reception rooms. And you have to go and, you know, there's an area for you to work and you can see job postings. You can go around and see the schools and their vacancies. And they, you know, they have them up and they put a line through and they've recruited somebody and people are, you know, probably quite stressed and they would pay quite a lot to come there to fly there for a few days take time off work to you know find another job um but i have to say uh even though that pressure it, it was so like I did, I did feel a bit overwhelmed but because i wasn't really full i was living in london anyway i was doing my masters so i kind of just went along and i hadn't it's free actually if you go from england search associates is free i think in the uk they can't charge you um, equipment fair can't charge you but outside they can so if I was to do it from Dubai I think I'd pay $200 but in if I was in England I wouldn't have to and I know <laughs> I just remember people <laughs> made me laugh I shouldn't I think I just was like so overwhelmed that my only response was to laugh you were like hundreds of teachers who you know and you get on well and you chat and they're so lovely but at the same time you could be competing for the same job so I guess you have that like level of distance unless you definitely know they're not trying to get the same job as you but I remember people were just like furiously typing all the time. And I just thought, like, all day. And I was like, what, what are you typing? Because we'd print our CVs. They already had our CVs and cover letters. But people were like furiously and really intently and purpose. And I thought, you know, I might go on my laptop, but it, it made me laugh. And people were just, it was very, very serious. But it's a great practice. Sorry, that was a very long story to just give that example. Do you get, if you get a chance, definitely go to one. The next one is, yes, rehearse them. Your answers, so you're confident. Be careful. Think about where you're going to do your CV. You know, it is probably better to have like a blank wall. I know I have a lot of distractions in the background here, but it's comfortable and I like it kind of shows my personality a little bit. But, you know, somewhere that's quiet, that's good lighting, that has good, good internet connection, a tidy, especially if you're looking behind, if there's a mirror, make sure you can't you see any, anything reflected. A great tip by uh, people have shared in the group is to, have your CV at hand so you can refer to it, but also have your keywords and, you know, the things that you definitely want to get communicate on post-it notes all around your laptop screen. So, you know, you, they can't tell that you're looking at them. So that's something you could do. Always check your webcam, your microphone, 
and have your CV near you so you can check dates. Also, if things go wrong, never ever panic. I know when I was going doing my interview for school in Shanghai, and in China there was maybe some block on Skype or something. So with the head teacher, the connection kept breaking or else it would start. We could see each other, but we couldn't hear each other. And Hank was on his side, the issues were on his side. But I can do is relax, no point getting stressed. So I just wrote the stuff on a, on a notebook, held it up. You know, we laughed, we tried to do sign language. And he said after when eventually our connection worked that he was really impressed that he could, it shows I could deal under pressure, that I didn't lose my head. Because in a lot of international schools, things will change at the last minute, particularly at startup schools. You have to get used to kind of rolling with the punches, you know, dealing with surprising situations. Honestly, just, yeah, just take it easy. Life is too short to get stressed. I mean, it's fine. Okay, guys, any questions? I'm just going to quickly go and check the group. Do you have any questions at all about any aspect of CV cover letters, either something from the challenge or something outside the challenge? I'm going to go and check. I see the comments here. Technically, yes, Stephen, are you still okay? Can you still hear? Hi, Abira. Hope I answered your question. Hi, Jules. How are you? I'm just, I check my phone because it's not coming up on my screen. Abira, I hope I answered your question. Yes, Marie Sherbourne Catter. Yes, Asher, do let me know. Please let me know. I know you posted some questions about contracts in the group, but do put it in uh, the, the other, the private group, or do post them here now and answer you now. Teaching how to test. Okay. Now, Now, before you, I don't see, I've seen, yeah, do let me know if you have any questions there, and I don't see, I think I've answered them all, but if I haven't, do let me know. non -native, okay, good question, Abira. Non-native teachers in Sunday Chance in UAE. It is a very tough one, and I'll tell you why, and this is also not just for non-native, but also maybe for non-British trained, uh, not, like, so if you're South African trained, Irish trained, um, the thing is, in the UAE, it is so popular, especially Dubai, it is so popular, everyone wants to come here now. So in the past, they probably would have accepted teachers that weren't, you know, like weren't British trained or weren't this or that, you know, didn't fulfill all criteria maybe that they wanted. But because there, oh well, yeah, answer your questions in a second, Stephen. Um, but now they have got such, I mean, I know in schools, the school where I, where I am, for one job, they had like maybe 600 applicants or something. Like, it's unbelievable. The amount of teachers, everyone wants to work in Dubai and Abu Dhabi as well, to a lesser degree, but still it's quite popular. So the UAE can afford to be very choosy. So they, they do have certain requirements that they have in, you know, if it's a British school, then maybe we want some British or British trained. So it is quite difficult. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it is quite difficult for all teachers because they have such a huge pot, they can really be really selective on their criteria and find teachers who will meet that criteria. Um, but I still would definitely apply regardless, but make sure you have full teaching qualification. Hi Stephen, length of cover page. You mean covering letter? I always would go, I'm trying to think of my own, probably a page to a page and a half. Um, once you, your paragraphs that cover, I have a sort of idea where I'd have like a certain number of paragraphs to show your skills, maybe a paragraph to show what you can contribute to the school outside, like extracurricular activities, what are your hobbies that you can bring to the school, that you can teach the kids, because most schools abroad do require you to do after school clubs. Okay. Hi Asher, yes. Asher comes up and then I can't see your question, I don't know why that is. Let me go back here and check again. Yes, contracts. Yeah, I think so, 12 month contract. Yeah, mine's 12 month contract. Um, yeah, September, September, it should be, or August to August. Yeah, you should get paid for your holidays. Right. Okay guys, so before, please continue to put up your questions. I love answering them. If you're watching the replay guys, do put in hashtag replay and stick questions in and I will answer them uh, for you as soon as possible. Some exciting news guys. I hope you enjoyed the challenge. Please let me know how it went for you and um, let me know thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you 
if you where you are are you halfway there have you just started day one if someone got in touch with me had just they just started day one because it's UK and Ireland is still your it's our school week so they're going to try and get started tonight and tomorrow and remember it's open till Saturday um, and then it's finished I probably won't be running it again until the next academic year and um, just be aware but I do have some exciting news so if you feel you made a great start in your CV and cover letter and you it's made you think about it and you want to maybe take it further and you're intent on moving abroad to teach but you're finding it a bit overwhelming maybe you're have started the journey to working on your CV and you're committed to working even extra hard to make it the most perfect document, the most the best reflection of you as a teacher as you can, but you're not sure of the strategy, but you know what exactly you need to put in your covering letter or what exactly you need to put in your work history, for example, or maybe you're not even sure about the schools, like in Dubai, what's the difference between a private school, a public school, a government school, an IB school, a British school, and a, you know, Australian curriculum school, an international school. What does that mean for you as a teacher? What are the packages? How, what should you have in a good contract? If you're a bit stressed and feeling a bit nervous about how to overhaul your CV to work abroad, perhaps you're a teacher and you've been in the same job for 25 years or maybe you've been in the same school uh, for you know five, six years and you didn't even have to do, use a CV to get it because it was word of mouth or because you've done your teaching placement there and you haven't really ever done a proper CV cover letter or interview before. So you're procrastinating and you keep putting it off. I know me at the moment, if I haven't got a, a plan in my head, I procrastinate unbelievably. You, I hope all of you have set your goals. I don't know if you have or not. I'm a big believer in setting goals. Sorry, I'm digressing again. Um, and honestly, I'm a huge, like a big saver. I am like a big saver. I want to retire in the next like five years or so. I never want to be in debt. It stresses me out. I was... My, when I moved to Qatar, the recession was happening in Ireland and that really left a huge impact on me. For those of you who don't know much about Ireland, we had a really booming economy for a while. You know, people were like going and shopping holidays to New York, had a thousand, you know, people were having, had lots of cars, they were buying multiple houses and then our economy exploded or imploded. And honestly, it really, people lost their jobs, people lost their homes. So I'm really aware of that. Anyway, I'm kind of gone off track a bit, but basically what I'm saying is if I don't write down my goals or have goals to work towards, I know I notice myself I don't save as much. I procrastinate. So if you haven't got, you know, someone, you know, maybe a guidance or a set of goals to follow or a timeline, we do procrastinate about doing these things. Some of you maybe have you applied to some jobs abroad? I heard of someone, a teacher before we worked together, she'd applied to about 20 jobs and heard nothing back. Is that you? Maybe you're wondering, why haven't I heard anything back? I haven't even got an interview. And you know that you'd be amazing at the job, but maybe your CV and cover letter is just not selling you in the right way. Be aware that if you, if this might interest you, if it's something like you, you might want to continue, you've already started with the challenge. It's called Teach Abroad Transformation, and it is your one-stop shop to transforming your CV and cover letter to appeal to head teachers abroad and get the best job for you. Um, and it's not just, you know, for one time, it's lifetime access. What does that involve? I'm going to actually go out here and show you the page so you can get an idea. But it is my creation. It's something I'm very, very proud of. I'll show you there. I'm very proud of it. And um, it looks a bit like this. It's actually, I'll escape that so you can see. Uh, it's modules for uh to do with self-exploration, your CV, your cover letter, your interview. Let me zoom in here. Um, it's got 16 ways to find great teaching jobs abroad. There's videos, there's CV templates, there's swipe files to help you write your cover letter, for any, any, any emails to follow up with the school, how to negotiate your salary or contract politely. Um, you will learn how to tailor your CV and cover letter to each job application. You'll prepare outstanding answers to 20 of the most popular interview questions. So this is something that I'm really, really proud of. And this is what it looks like. Um, sorry, this is it here. And But there's also, if you don't feel like going to the transformation, so basically the transformation is where you go through some video modules and it can be done in a weekend if you put your mind to it and get me done in like two days. 
you'll also join an amazing Facebook group where you have constant support from me, Facebook lives from me, you can ask me any questions you have. And you'll also have access to the Teach Abroad Toolkit Masterclass. And there's a section in that about how to get a great teaching job in Dubai or the UAE. So that's really, really invaluable. You also can um, get, if you'd rather want something quicker, you can send one it to me and I'll review it and revamp it and give you a video feedback. And then there's a bundle where I do both your CV and cover letter. So that's basically uh, what I am absolutely passionate about. Um, I absolutely love doing it. I love transforming people's CVs. Thank you, Asher. Thank you so much. Delighted to hear that. Thank you so much. I'm passionate about helping people find their skills, finding their passions, and also being fully inform informed so that they choose the best school for them, particularly if you know you're dependent or you want to save. It's really important to know what kind of school you're getting into. And in addition to when you send me your CV and cover letter to check, I will also ask you questions so I can guide you in the right direction or give you some idea of the school you should be looking at, the school you should be applying to, maybe what you should be avoiding, what you should be looking for in a contract to suit your situation as well. So this is uh, the Teacher Board Transformation. And I'm going to, before I go there, I do want you to check out here. So here are just some of the feedback I have received. And again, if you go to www.teach abroadtransformation.com you'll see um, that many many teachers have used it before and many have got into the top tier schools um, and have a, have had multiple offers so here okay so really really yes get people getting shortlisted for Skype interviews so I think it's really really valuable so guys as I say thank you to you all for taking part in the challenge I am giving you a 10% discount code. It's EET10 off. Uh, you can use it with any of the services, the Teach Board Transformation, the cover letter uh, or CV revamp or the cover letter and CV revamp. And it will be valid until Monday 28th of January and you can use it to get 10% off. And that's just to say thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for taking part in the CV challenge. Thank you for asking questions. So definitely uh, do get on that. It's a limited time only. All right. So let me see if do I have any more questions, anything at all. If you want to ask me about the course, you want to ask me about the revamp, if you want to ask me about finding jobs abroad, now's your chance. I'll be on for the next few minutes. Do let me know. I'm just going to do this so I can see if I have any questions at all. Sorry. No, nothing. But again, that's 10% off and that is until. Brilliant. Super. Yeah. So I'll leave that again open there so you can see. But just to remind you, again, people get rid of procrastination, change their CVs around, got new jobs. And I also, if you go to my page, you'll see there's tons more testimonials, tons more recommendations um, of people who have, here we are, uh, getting shortlisted, there we are, updating CVs. Yeah, video feedback, yeah. Yes, after your transformation program, I had received seven verbal offers, I had to reject four contracts. Okay, so, if you want to know more about it, there's a video here. You can watch it here. It'll tell you. It'll actually Hello and goes. Welcome to the there we are. No one wants to hear my voice again. Double. That sounds awful. Uh, it'll go in behind the scenes. So you can see what it's like behind the scenes. Okay. So do take a look at that. Okay, guys. And I'll put this up again. So you remember. 10% off any of the services until Monday, 28th of January. So it gives you time to finish your challenge and decide if it's for you. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Let me see. Uh, sorry, Samira. Uh, I checked the CD and cover letter once. Uh, possible. I will. Yeah, I'll take a look at it once you've finished. Okay, but it will be probably a much quicker version because hopefully you've implemented everything, and I'll just give you feedback and say yes or no. Yeah, absolutely. I will definitely do that. All right, and that is that's quicker than the. 
that usually is, a, well, about 48 hours maximum turnaround time, okay? Okay, hope that helps, guys. Again, 10% off. Thank you so much for tuning in. Any questions, stick them in. I'll put all the information in a comment below. I will start getting back into my weekly Wednesday Facebook, Work Wednesday Facebook Lives. I've been, honestly, since the start of the year, it's been so busy with exams and marking, um, so much marking. But I will, my my goal for the next, this year is to go back to doing my Wednesday Facebook, Work Wednesday Facebook Lives about all aspects, professional aspects of working abroad as an expat teacher and also Money Monday. I used to always do Money Monday. Just again, inspiration, some motivation to help you save. Start, especially those teachers who are already current expat teachers, what you shouldn't do to save. So it could be a podcast, might be a blog post, might be a Facebook Live, might be a money saving tip, just to get us back in that. It's after the holidays, probably spent a lot. It's January, it's time for setting goals, setting money goals, setting saving goals. Um, and something I'm passionate about as well. I'm going to actually do, I've got a three day 30K challenge that I hope to do in the next few weeks as well. Just three days of videos similar to the CV challenge to help you kickstart your savings. It's so important that we save, especially as time goes on. Sometimes in some places, packages are getting less and less. The salaries are being lowered. Contracts are being changed. So it's really important that we make the most of what we can when, when we can. When times are good, we should really, really be saving as much as we can. Okay, guys, hope that helped. Again, it's at teachabroadtransformation.com. You'll find details of the three services I offer. Uh, for the yeah to transform your CV, the one I have on the screen, it's the only one that has the access to the private group and it has the masterclass, which is really really valuable. I go through the for profit, not for profit schools and what implications and um, are for you as a teacher. Also, I go to section for Irish teachers, for British teachers, for American teachers, where you can find great jobs. So that's really really valuable too, and that's a bonus that comes on the Teacher Board Transformation. Okay, guys, any questions at all, do let me know, whether it's about the challenge, CVs, my services, do let me know. Okay, and make sure you use your discount if you're, it's interested me, feel it's for you, and um, make sure you use a discount, on t only valid until Monday 28th of January. What's everyone up to for the weekend? I'd love to hear. I am going for breakfast tomorrow if my, my friends are out tonight, um, obviously I didn't go tonight because I was hang out with you guys but they're all out tonight on a big teacher's night out <laughs> with discounts on beverages so I hope they're up in time so I can go to breakfast tomorrow I'm dying to try a new place for breakfast but anyway I hope you're all going to have a nice weekend those of you in Ireland England Tyrone Scotland you've got work tomorrow so have a good day at work last day at work before the weekend and have a lovely weekend and yeah see it over the week any questions do let me know you can either post in the group post in the comment section or you can email me at info at circa info at circa coil .com if you have any questions before you purchase or before you proceed any further with this okay have a lovely weekend talk to you soon bye bye